All right, shalom everyone, shalom, shavua tov for everybody. And now we're learning this week's Torah portion. This week's Torah portion is, is reading. Is, first of all, it's unique <clears throat> for several reasons. First of all, it's unique because it's, it's the wisdom and the will of God. So every word in the Torah is unique. Secondly, it's unique because it's the last Torah portion, Torah reading in the book of Leviticus. Ends it off. Also, it's unique because it has uh, several unique commandments in it. Uh, Twelve commandments, and all of them. We'll have to look through them. Don't aren't really relevant now. It's talking about if a person wants to give a the value of someone else, he makes a vow to the to the uh, temple, and what type of language he uses, and exactly what the, the language implies. And that if you make something holy to the temple, you're not allowed to exchange it for anything else. And then they also, there's different types of, of uh, dedications you can make to the temple. Maybe we'll talk about what them afterwards. But then in the end, then, I'm sorry, then in the end, but also the, the main feature of this Torah reading is the curses. Packed with curses. Packed with the curses. Frightening, awesome, terrible, scary curses that God says he'll, he'll bring on the Jewish people if they don't do what God wants. And he we see he did it. He wasn't, he wasn't uh, these were not idle threats. He, he really did. We'll look, we'll have a look at some of these terrible curses. Oh, excuse me. It's terrible curses. 48, 49, 49 curses. 49 curses. That's a lot of curses. And um, <clears throat> 49 curses. And later on in, in Deuteronomy, there's, there's, there's twice as many. There's 98 curses in another chapter, chapter Kitavo. That are waiting for the end, but we, as, it was, as we learned in the Sicha in the morning, that these curses are really blessings. They're really blessings. I don't know what type of blessings they are, but we'll find out what they are. But the curse part of them, for sure, has been fulfilled the destruction of the first temple, the second temple, the Holocaust, the expulsions, all these terrible things that have happened to the Jews. They've certainly happened. How these things are really blessings inside and disguise i mean i believe that what the rabbi says is true i believe that it's true but i don't see it doesn't doesn't make any sense to me but um i guess it will that's one of the big things on the sheikh that we'll see the inside of everything huh? we'll see the inside of everything okay excuse me one second oh, oh, so there's the 48 curses, 49 curses in this uh, in this week. In, in, interestingly enough, this also corresponds to the 49 days between Passover and Shavuot. 49 days, and each one of these days is a blessing. We make a blessing on the on the day. So hopefully, hopefully the blessings that we make will transform the, all these curses to blessings. Also, we'll we'll see what the curses are. They're pretty pretty stiff. Curses. But let's let's start off at the beginning. This Torah portion is called Bukhukotai. It means in my statutes. This is in Bukhukosai Telechu. If you walk in my statutes, and what we see Rashi says this means learning the Torah. If you go in my statutes, my laws, as Muslim Mitzvah, and my commandments, you keep and you do them. Some people say the keep means the negative commandments and do them as the positive commandments. Because, you know, in Judaism, there's 613 commandments, and 248 of them are positive commandments, and 365 are what we call prohibitions, negative commandments. So that means doing the commandments. And this word says, it means to learn Torah. So it says, if you do these things, if you do these things, then let's go a little further and we'll see. See this big 
Orachayim Akadosh here. Incredible. Orachayim Akadosh. Well, we're going to do this. Huh? We're going to do a try at least. Beautiful. This is beautiful explanation he gives. On, this, on the same sentence, there's 42 different explanations. 42, right? 42 different explanations. So oh, maybe we'll get half of them. Okay. So it says, if you do, then what's the what's the reward going to be? Huh? What's the reward going to be? Not going to heaven. Doesn't talk about you. Then you. There is such a thing as heaven. But that's not what he talks about here. Simply speaking, this is very, very superficial. Hidden inside of this is very deep secrets. Says the Torah, if you do my commandments, learn the Torah and do my commandments, the Natati Kishmecha Bitam, I'll give the rains in their time, the land will give its produce, the trees will give its fruits. The, the, the one crop will eat the other crop and the other, other crops of the year. Well, then you'll, you'll bre- eat your bread. In other words, there'll be crops the whole entire year. You'll eat your bread with satisfaction and you'll sit with certainty in the land of Israel. I will give peace in the land. You will go to sleep and you'll never be afraid. I'll get rid of the wild animals from your land and the sword will never pass through your land. There won't even be any thoughts of war. Armies won't even go through your land to make a war with other countries, right? On the way to make a war. You will run after your enemies and they'll fall in front of you, in front of your sword. In other words, you do the commandments, there's still going to be people that are going to hate you. So your enemies will run away from you, and one of you will, and, and five of you will um, run after a hundred. <clears throat> five will run after a hundred, and a hundred will run after ten thousand. Well, it's not, that not proportional. We'll talk about this. And your enemies will fall in front of you. Uh, to by the sword, and I will turn myself to you, and I will make you fruitful, and I will increase you, and I will keep my covenant with you. You will eat the old fruits or whatever, and the old fruits will still be there before the new fruits come in. There'll never be a. There'll always be plenty. I will put my dwelling among you, and I will never reject you. Uh, it's pretty good, pretty good. And I will walk among you, and I will be for you, for God, and you will be for me, for a people. I am God, your God that took you out of Egypt and from being slaves, and I will b- break any sort of yoke of, um, of uh, servitude to the nations, and I will... I will uh, lead you standing up, you know, proudly, right? Pretty good, huh? 13 sentences, beautiful pro- problem, pro- promises. Now the problems begin. In Lotish Mulut, but if you don't listen to me and you don't do these commandments that I'm commanding you, if in my commandments you despise and my laws are, uh, you reject, then, and, and you don't want to keep the covenant with me. So then says God, I'll do the same thing to you. Okay, let's not go into it. Let's just go from the beginning. Let's go back to the beginning. Here we go. Eh, 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 eh. We have this beautiful long, just exact, so you know what we're talking about. Uh, one minute here. One, just one minute. What's this? Oh, one second, my record. Yes, I'm recording, but I am. Thank you, and I, I want to pause for a moment. Now let us go back to the beginning and learn some of the explanations over here. Especially, we'll learn the Ora Chaim, Rabbi uh, Chaim Ben Atar, Holy Rabbi Ben Atar, Chaim Ben Atar. That he says about himself it, that he was the Mashiach. He said that he is the Mashiach. Okay. If in my statutes you go and my commandments you keep and you do them, says Rashi, 
Yocho, you might think when it says if mechukotai means my statutes, you might think this means doing the commandments. When it says do my commandments, so obviously th- that means the commandments. So what does it mean mechukotai? Says Hari Kiyoma Mitzvot Amor. It already said the, is referring to God is saying do my commandments. So what does it mean mechukotai? You should keep. Ha mani makayam mechukotai telechu as sheti amalim b'Torah. That you should work hard in learning Torah, understanding the Torah, and learning the different interpretations and commentaries of the Torah, and understanding is to the best of your ability. It mitzvotai, my commandments. That that means it should be. That's mitzvotai shishmu. That, in other words, you should be a malim. Al malim is working hard in the Torah. What in order to do the commandments, in order to, to, how do you say, refrain from the prohibitions and to do the positive commandments, like it says, In other words, the main thing is, is to learn the Torah in order to do the commandments. So both of them have to go together. Here, let's look at the Bala, Bala, Bala Torah before we get to the Orachayim. This is the gematria. This is the numerical value, right? You take the, the, the number of the, the value of each letter. Aleph is one, is one, and Mem is 40, and Base is two, etc. So that comes out to be that's the gematria of. A mulling bedivrei Torah, working hard at words of Torah. Right, take the value of this; it's the same thing as the value of this. <clears throat> this is right next to Shabbat, right in, in the previous previous Torah, Torah chapter. Out of the previous Torah reading, end up it ended up by saying here. One minute, verse. Oh, here it says. How did it end up? It says, "Et Shabtotai Tishmoro Umikdashi Tiro Ani Hashem." Right? That's what the it said here. Can you see this? Maybe it's backwards. Anyway, it says you should keep the last sentence of last week's Torah portion. Said, "Keep my Shabbat and respect my holy temple. I am God." That's what it says. This is why this comes right after that. Why? To tell you that. That Shabbat and the temple also, the Shabbat is, I'm sorry, the Shabbat ve avodat elilim and idolatry. The keeping Shabbat and avoiding idolatry is equal to all of the commandments and the laws. The Od Samach Shabbat le benitatim geishmechem itam. God, God said, I will give you the reins in their proper time. That's what he says over here, right? If you do my commandments, I will give you the reins in their time. Right. I will give the reins in their proper time. When is the proper time for rain to fall? The best time for rain to fall is Shabbat in the nighttime. Shabbat in the nighttime is the best time for rain to fall. Why? Because people are at home. They're home with their families. They're not traveling anywhere. On Shabbat, there's no, all the businesses are all closed, nowhere to travel. Perfect time for rain to fall, right? It doesn't disturb everybody. Everybody's happy you're sitting in your house, warm, and the rain is pattering off of your windows, and you're sitting in dry and in a dry, protected place. Best thing makes your Shabbat. That's, that's what it means. I'll give the rains in their time, means when? In Shabbat. That's what it means in Shabbat, the nighttime of Shabbat. This is the first letters. Im This is the first letters of Aleph, Beit, Tuf. Avot. What's this? Avot. The way of the fathers. That you will go in the way of the fathers. Avot. Avram Yitzchak Yaakov. Bechukotai telecho. This is fearing God, like it says. Yirat Hashem. He owes all the fear of God. This is a treasure house. And if you fill your uh, storehouse with fear, then 
et otsrotai amalei, then I will fill my, God said, I will open up my heavens and give you blessings. And you should do them, ba'asitem otam. Otam is the same letters as emet, aleph, mem, tav, emet. Do them, and do them in a way of truth. The Torah is the truth, but you also have to do it in a truth way that you should do the Torah. Like it says, schar tov l'cha'oseyem. If there will be asitem otam, you will get a tremendous reward for... Okay, let's go. Let's do the orachayim. Here, I'm sorry. Here, let, let's just do the last one. There are 10 sentences from Bechukotai Telecho until Be'olech Etchem Kimimiyut. Right, that I just read to you, those first, whatever, 15 sentences. Well, the, if you really look, there's 10 sentences there that talk about which blessings you get. This corresponds to the 10 blessings that Ba'yiten Lecha Asur, and also connected the 10, Ba'yiten the, the, Lecha, this is the blessings that Ye, Jack, Ye, Jacob gave to his sons, and also the um, the Ten Commandments, sort that he wrote. Ten Commandments. So we, if we count them, we'll see that there are ten sentences here, but we're not going to count them right now. We can count them on their own. Let, let's do the Or HaChayim HaKadosh. Right. In Telehu, the Torah Kahanim, the Torah Kahanim is a midrash, it's called Sifra. And it's a midrash on the book of uh, Vayikra, Leviticus. It says, You might think that these, these are the commandments, what Rashi just brought. When it says Mitfotai, that, that's already the midrash. What do I say, Bechokotai? This means you have to be working at Torah. So that's what Rashi brought, right? We just read Rashi. Why is it that the Torah calls this Amal HaTorah Chukah? Why is it that the Torah calls working hard at learning the Torah? Why is it called Chukah? Achok. That's sad because she is bo mitzvah afilu lilmod devarim because there is a commandment to learn things that you've already learned twice, three times, and they're certain by you. In other words, you're not learning anything new. So why should you learn the Torah and go over the same thing over? Because chafetz Hashem bechafetz the Torah, because God desires, He loves, learn, when people learn Torah, chuko chakak v'timsa sha'omru zal ki latam shalimu the Torah, Torah b'cheshek. I'm sorry, I should have stopped here. Because God just desires learning the Torah. So it comes out that that what the rabbis say, ki latam shalimur adam, Torah. When a person learns Torah with a great, I didn't say a, a desire, a pleasure. And then the, the rabbis decreed, shiyeh adam lo made v'shochach. That the, there was a decree that was made. Sorry, not, no, not, not the rabbis. That God decided that people would learn and that they would forget. Right? And why? So that you would go over the Torah and you would remember it would be like new to you each time. So you'd be able to learn the same thing over and over again. Why does it say if my statutes you walk? This is that both Torahs. You have to learn both Torah. What, to, what type of two Torahs are there? The written Torah and the oral Torah. The Torah that God gave to Moses on Mount Sinai to be written down, and what he gave on Mount Sinai, and also afterwards to be explained. When it's written in Bechukotai, there's no Vav written in the, in the Torah. Lomer to say, the oral Torah, 
who Kalula is included inside of the written Torah, right? It says, Bechuk, that's plural. If it would just, if it would just say, Bechokoti, Bechukoti, it always means my singular, my law. Chokoti, when it says, Bechukotai, so it apply, apply, it's implying that there's many. And this implies that what that this, so he says, what do you mean many? There's two. There's the written Torah and the oral, oral Torah. It says this is what, it, but it's written without the Vav in the Torah, even though it's pronounced with a Vav. So it's pronounced plural, but it's written singular. This is to show you that the oral Torah is included inside of the written Torah. Kalula b'Torah shevachtav, and there it is. The Oed also it hints at chukotai. This is plural. Like I said, it says Joshua. In the book of Joshua, you should learn Torah day and night. That's what it means. Learning Torah has to be plural. You have to set times for learning the Torah in the daytime and in the nighttime. Okay, Ode, and now we're going to get to some of these other explanations. Let's go. Ode, Yurtza, and also it comes to say like this. I can make this bigger also. Can make this bigger? No. Also, it comes to say like this. Okay, good. Two things. Number one, a person has to learn. Bechukotai means plural. It means to say you have to learn for yourself. And second, you have to teach others. Like it says, You should teach them to your children. And that they should know it well. And children also refuse to your pure pupils. Lozea, therefore, it says chukotai, plural. Namely, what does it mean, plural? That you should learn and that you should teach. Also, another double, the shmor, the negative commandments, the lasot, and to do the positive commandments. That's what it says, mitzvotai tishmu vasitematam. Like it's going to say, and my commandments, you should preserve. Watch, that's the, that's the prohibitions. Vasitam etam, you should do the positive one. Why does it say, in b'chukotai telechu, if you walk in my statutes? Now we have to remember something. Who is writing this? Who, who wrote this? This is God himself wrote this. This makes no sense, but that's the fact. God himself was creating me and you, was creating all the world, creating all the angels and all the stars and all these amazing things. That same God gave us this book. And in this book, it says all these sort of very difficult things to understand. What is the, what's the point? So that's where God gave Moses all of these explanations that it would be passed down so that we would be able to understand. But there's a lot of things in the Torah that you have to learn the explanations. The explanations are not self-evident. You have to learn. And a lot of times the explanations that the rabbis give even contradict each other. That's what God wanted, that there should be arguments, that the whole Talmud is filled with these arguments. God wanted there to be arguments so that you'll know every side of the of every issue. <clears throat> and that's what it means, a in the Torah, that you should be working hard at learning the Torah. So, okay, why does it say you should be walking in the Torah? This means learning we said Bukhokotai means to learn Torah, to learn with great diligence, to learn the ideas. Why does it say to walk? It should say, it should say in Bukhokotai till Madu or something. If in my statutes you you learn, you understand, you walk. What does it you walk? What does it mean walking in the statutes? What does that mean? This is why does it say walking? To tell you that even when you're walking, you have to say words of Torah. Like it says, it's one of the sentences we say in Shema Yisrael, even when you're walking on the road, that you have to say words of Torah. Because you love the Torah so much that you talk the words of Torah constantly. And we'll get to over here, we'll see if we, how far we get. The Zohar says there's a punishment for anybody who, who travels and doesn't, uh, doesn't learn Torah. Base. 
Ode, here's another explanation. <clears throat> there's going to be 42 of these. I don't know how many we're going to get to. We'll see. We'll do some tomorrow also because they're, they're beautiful. We're just really stuff. Just this is the Orachayim. These are the words of the Mashiach. Orachayim lived at the same time as the Baal Shem Tov, like 400 years ago, something like that, two, 300, two, 350 years ago. Oh, it's like the rabbis say in the Midrash, Vayikra Raba, on the sentence, Chashavdi Darachai, I have reckoned my ways. King David said, King David uh, in, in Psalms, he would just think to do something. And his feet would take him there automatically. El Beta Midrash to the place of learning, Lerova Chafetz, because he had such a tremendous desire and will, and he was so accustomed to do it. So that's what it means. As soon as he thought, as soon as he thought, he moved. That's what it says in Bechukotai Telechu. What does it mean? That you should go yourself automatically after the Torah. Like King David said, because you love the Torah and the commandments so much that Telechu, you, you walk there automatically, like King David said. Third explanation. Here's another implication from this. Od Yurzal P Maimoram, like the rabbis say in the Zohar. The Orachayim, he really, I guess it was an example of Mashiach. He knew everything, all the aspects of the Torah, the hidden aspects, the revealed aspects, and he taught all these different aspects of the Torah. Okay, so I said, the Torah has four ways. This is in the Zohar. That there's four uh, aspects of the Torah. What's it called? Pshat, Remesh, Drush, and Sod. Four basic levels of understanding, simple meaning of the Torah, things that are hinted at, things that you can learn out, homiletic, and the secrets of the Torah. Four. Ome'elu, Nifredu, Ayin Panim. And each one of them has what's called 70 faces. Call open, Makama Orchin. And each one of these 70 faces in these four levels of learning, each one of these 70 also has many paths and roads and this branches out, branches out. We're talking about genuine ideas in the Torah, genuine learning of the Torah. If, if a person diverts from the genuine ways of Torah, then there's billions of ways of learning the Torah. You can make, you know, it's like saying one and one is two. Uh, one and one is three, one and one is four, one and one is five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine, nine. There's infinite numbers of mistakes that you can make. And so one and one is only two. That's just in mathematics. It, it doesn't add up to anything else. So maybe you can have all sorts of other permutations of, you know, of two. You know, one and one is, you know, uh, one and a half and a half. Uh, but generally speaking, that so mistakes you can make a lot more mistakes than you can, in um, and be accurate. So, the, but but even when you are accurate in the Torah, which that refers to God fearing that you don't want to make up things that might divert a person from the truth, or uh, remove enthusiasm from doing the commandments. Those are what's called false explanations. Like in the time of the temple, there were false prophets. There's also false prophets. But it, even in the true way of learning the Torah, there's in a very big way, four different levels. Simple meaning, mysterious meaning, and in the middle, right, the Kabbalistic meaning, and in the middle, there's other two different, also different, two different levels of interpretation. In these four themselves, they can be broken down at the 70, and each one of those 70 can also be broken down and sub and sub broken down. That's what it says, chukotai. That's what it says, my chukotai, in my statutes, many. Telechu, that you should go. What does it mean, go? And all of these different paths and roads, you can go in them, like the rabbis say, in betorah, and you should not say that the Torah has just a simple meaning, and that's it.
Dalid. Old Yutzab Omru also, when it said, now, and there's another thing I think is important to say. The Jewish people uh, have been evicted from countries. They've been evicted, especially in Europe, right? They were evicted from, you know, from Spain, from Portugal, from France, from England, from this. Not in that order. I think England was first, and then, and then Italy, and then <clears throat> evicted, evicted, evicted from one place. Now, when they were evicted, so they couldn't take that much with them all the time. And there were a lot of people that had, you know, big libraries that they, they themselves had written books, you know, and they had books from others. Now, a lot of these, there weren't, there weren't printing presses, so they had to be written. But a lot of them, someone told me that, that in, and that was the Jews in, in Euro, European countries. It was the same thing also, but to a lesser degree, there was less, um, uh, how do you say, pursuing and hatred of the Jews in the Arab countries, but there certainly was not lacking. Certainly was not lacking. And people told me that there were great tzaddikim, especially in, in um, uh, Morocco, Morocco, holy, holy, holy Jews, tremendous Torah scholars, and that they wrote tremendous amounts and they buried them. They put them in whatever it is, you know, clay vessels or something, and they buried them when they had to run away from one place to another or move to another place. And sometimes they un unearth these things. There's, so there's mountains and mountains of Torah that have been left, you know, only a small amount came down to us. The Rebbe, for instance, he said, why isn't there much written on the seven Noahide commandments? I mean, it's a commandment for the Jewish people to correct the whole entire world. All the religions that the people in the world have, they're all false. They're all mistakes, all of them, without exception. They were, they were given by men that had a dream or a vision or an appearance or something like that. And, you know, they're very wonderful, but they're all false. They're all, they're all wrong. They're all wrong. And we're supposed to correct them with what's called the seven Noahide commandments. So you think there should be more written about that. So the Rebbe said, this was a speech the Rebbe made, I think, in 1986. He said that up to now, it's been dangerous. Up to now, it's been dangerous to even insinuate that there's something wrong with the other religions. The Rebbe said, no, there's no, it's not dangerous anymore. Now you can talk to them. It has to be done in a nice way, in a pleasant way, but still. So there's mountains and mountains and mountains of of, of Torah reading that was destroyed by the non-Jews and, and Germany is not what to say, but they burnt all these books in the, in the time of the communists also, how much they burned, how much they did. And so there's mountains and mountains of, of learning of Torah. So that's what it says, Telechu, that you should go in these different paths that the, the true interpretations of the Torah, they branch out and branch out and branch out. There's more and more and more genius ideas in the Torah, Dalit. Also, when it says telechu, that you should walk in the ways, this is like it says in Mishle, in Proverbs, all of the ways, all, in all of your ways, you should know God. The Rambam, Maimonides, he writes, in the laws of the foundations of the Torah, and he says, Yusim Alibo, Rambam, Maimonides says, you should take it to your heart that in order that a person's body should be complete and strong, in order that yeah, in order that uh, you can know God, a person that's sick, he can't, he, he, he can't think about God. It's impossible to know the wisdom and the ways of God if a person is not healthy. So it comes out that a person that walks in this way, the Rambam says, that, so he gives advice how a person should eat and etc. And if you, then, then uh, I, I promise you, the Rambam says, if you, Eat according to what I say, and you do according to it. You'll never be sick one day of your life, and you can serve God all of your days. That's what it says. In That's what it means. That in order to go in the ways of the Torah, so telecho then you, the ways that you go in the normal way, for instance, how you eat and etc. and drink and how you speak, then then everything should come out in that you should telecho all of your normal ways. You should. You should, uh, uh, I say, you should live a healthy life in order, in order that you should learn the Torah. In order to be healthy, to learn the Torah. Another explanation. Also, what it says in the Gemara and Sanhedrin, that this permission is given to those who learn Torah <clears throat> to explain in it and to make up their own ideas. <clears throat> and paths, and a Talmud Vatik Yechadesh, 
But Rosh is a Ketuvim, and you can make up new ideas if you want to, new connections in the Torah. As you're able, as, as much as you're able. And, and God commanded here, that's what it says, Im kotai. That's the Torah, Telechu. If you are sunk in learning the Torah and you really want to seek the truth in the Torah, so it's a condition that et mitzvotai. What does that mean? You can learn, give out new ideas, and you can write new novelai, whatever it's called, but there's one condition. You shouldn't make up ideas in the Torah which discourage people from doing the commandments. Don't say that what's Forbidden is permissible. And also, asitamatam, you should not say what is right. Shalom yitayar, don't say what is, don't try to make what is forbidden permissible. And you should also do them. Don't say what is permissible is forbidden. Huh? Came along this. Princess came along. You don't have to put on tefillin anymore. We have the land of Israel. You don't have to put on tefillin anymore. Right? It's not, those are all outdated commandments. Right? What about eating kosher? Oh, you don't have to keep kosher. You can eat whatever you want to. No is a no, a new time. There's no, no law. So if so, it comes out that what are you doing? That you're making what is permissible forbidden. You don't have to do the commandments. What's, what is good and permissible? So you don't have to do them. And what's forbidden is it's okay, you can do. But if you learn the Torah, from learning the Torah, you can come to almost any conclusion as you want. If you're smart enough and you're clever enough, you can take any sort of idea. And of course, like we said so many times, so many times before, that's the whole essence of what Christianity is, is twisting and perverting and diverting the Torah and learning the Torah exactly the opposite of the way it's supposed to be learned, exactly the opposite. But if you're clever, you can prove anything you want to. Right? So that's what he says. It's a good thing to make up ideas in the Torah. It's a good thing to be inventive in the Torah. But God forbid it shouldn't be in such a way that leads people to do things that are forbidden and discourage people to do things which are permissible, which are, are a commandment. That's what it means. That you should go, that when you learn the Torah, it should be in a way of telechu, that you go in the ways of the Torah, teaches people. Okay, let's do, we'll do one more and that's it. Also, we can explain another way, like it says in Perki Avos. Lo amo or it's chasid. A person that is an ignoramus cannot be a chasid. She'asur la amo or it's lit naeg chasidut. That a person who is an ignorant, he's not allowed to all of a sudden add on himself all sorts of uh, severities and be like a, a, a chassid. Right? He decides he's going to fast 15 times a week. Because sometimes a person will make severities on himself and make sins, right? He, he fasts for days in a row. He doesn't go to sleep. He's always miserable. He's half awake all the time. Because you'll find that a person is a chassid, that he wants to, how do you say, limit himself make himself holy and etc. And because of that, maybe he'll come to do all sorts of things that are forbidden and he'll come to forbid himself all sorts of things that are permissible because he wants to right, make himself suffer. So therefore, that's what it says, that you should learn Torah, then mitzvotai tishmru, namely, that you should do the commandments in in a proper way, the, learning the Torah, do the Torah in a proper way when, if you learn the Torah properly. If you learn the Torah and you know what the laws are, then you don't start making up your own laws and things like that. And you start, you know, the, 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 wearing barbed wire undershirts or, you know, uh, the, the, the fasting for 50 days in a row, not talking to anybody. There's people that do that. They don't talk to anyone. You say, hi, how are you? Mm -hmm. I, the, <clears throat> there is such a thing as a, a tiny, uh, a fast and speaking, but it has to be that everybody knows you don't make a big deal out of it. You're not, 
advertise him how righteous you are and how great you are. So that's what it says. If you learn the Torah properly, then you'll do the commandments properly. Now we're up to Zion. God willing, we'll do more. Let's do uh, Pirki Avot. Pirki Avot. Second. There we go.